Hey everyone, this is Terry. Today we're going to talk about several topics. These are based upon questions that I've received from those people that are either a subscriber of my Facebook group, which is just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire, or it's in the PE Design 11 group in Facebook. I typically post videos that are related to PE Design 11 directly to that group. And then I also have questions that come through the YouTube channel through those people that subscribe there. I try not to respond to questions in Messenger because I get spam in Messenger. So if you sent me something and I haven't responded, please put it in Facebook or on YouTube. That way everybody has the advantage of hearing the question. Odds are they have the same question too, trust me. So the first thing I want to address is Wi-Fi. And the consensus seems to be that, first of all, you need to make sure that you're selecting the Wi-Fi network that is the 1.8, uh, that if you have multiple networks in your house. So make sure your, your PC is on that network and then also your machine. I know I used to have a computer that it would actually go out and look for the stronger signal and choose that network. I don't believe I have that now. The other thing that can happen is it can be caused by your um, antivirus software. I couldn't even remember the name of it. So the antivirus software can interrupt whenever you're trying to add. So if you can disable that, do disable it while you're trying to add your machine. The next thing is you may need to get closer. It might be a matter of signal strength. I know there's times of the day in my house, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I think it's when all the kids come home and they all get on their tablets. So those may be some of the things. But you can see that I have my machine here. I've added it. I'll choose OK. And one of the things that was asked to me, how do I find the designs that are on my machine? Well, first of all, you can only connect through PE Design 11 wirelessly to your Luminaire or if you have a palette and you have a Solaris, you can only connect to that machine. You cannot connect to your dream machine or your destiny. You'll have to use your USB stick for that. And you want to go to Import. Now, when you choose Import, you have several folders. One of those is a network sewing machine. So you see my machine here, and you'll see some files. The PES files that you see are files that I saved from somewhere else. But we'll scroll down, and you can see, okay, I just sent this one here. I can import this in. So that's really nice, because if I wanted to add something to this, I can do that. And let me delete it, and let's choose a different design. And one of the things you'll see when you send a design, and I'll show you that in a moment, you get an acknowledgement that you sent it. But when you send it from your machine, you get no acknowledgement, and that's why I have three of these here. So that's going to be one of my requests to Brother that they add that in. I think that would be a nice to have. So here I have a design, and I want to show you something on background fills. And we'll choose an echo fill, and we'll go ahead and click on the background, and we'll choose next. Now your machine, if you have a Luminaire, it has this echo fill. It has, the, actually it has, I think, the echo clip pattern, not the other echo. I want the echo, though. The nice thing about doing this bill here is, first of all, you can choose different stitch types. So there are three offered, but you can actually choose more, and I'll show you that in a moment. I want to use a running stitch. And you can also tell it how many times it's... Now, the next thing I want to show you is, let's say that you have this and you really don't like pieces of it. So let me click off of it for a minute. I really don't like this little piece hanging out here, so I'll select it and I'll delete it. That's really nice because now I can edit this and get it just like I want it. And now let's scroll down and I don't want this little piece either. So we'll select it and I'll choose delete. And, 
and I like that so I want to send it to my machine so all I do is send to network machine and I need to click on my machine and now you can see that it's finished outputting you will get this message in PE design 11 you don't get a message in the machine when you send it so remember that okay we'll do file new we'll look at the next question that I had the next question I had was related to a person that had a embroidery design. It had an open area in it. And I'll use this text as an example because this text is available in your Luminaire and it's also available on the Dream Machine if you had some of the updates. And we'll just move it into the center. Now, if I really want this to be centered, you know, in the center, I, I can also go and let's find it. First of all, we need to select it, and we'll do that here. And we'll go to the Home tab, and we'll go to Arrange, and we'll move it to the center. So now it's really centered. So now what we'll do is we'll go to Background Fill, and their question was, Terry, can I add stippling to the outside and inside on my luminaire? And the question is, not in one, or, or the answer is no, not in embroidery edit. You can add it to the outside in embroidery edit, stitch out your design, then scan it into your My Design Center add a no sew line around the inside and then fill, fill it with the fill and the bucket in the inside and I do have a video showing that but the nice thing is MPE Design 11 you can do both and like everything in my design center you can first of all you can create an offset and that offset applies both to the outside and the inside you cannot set up different offsets for one or the other it will be the same for both and let's just choose okay so like anything that you create with the background fill and you can create your own you can select portions of this fill and you can change it so if i wanted to change it and let's say that what i want to do is i want to make it a net fill and let's go over to our sewing attributes and let's do a few little changes you can change the spacing on this i want it to be a larger net fill and i could change the angle if i want also so let's change the angle and we'll just move it so it's more or less on uh actually let's make it 45. so is we're close enough we're at 44 so you get an idea so here are some of the things you can do and you can do this in pe design 11 and that's why i love this software now if i like that i can go on and i can send that to my machine too so i'll send that to lily and now i have two designs that are ready to stitch out so let's choose file new and let's talk about the third topic and I didn't mean to choose save. I guess you know that you have true type fonts that are built into your computer. Now this happens to be a font that I downloaded that's called Loki Cola and I downloaded it from Defonts. I'll show you how to do that. It will vary with the font and with wherever you got the font. So I can't answer questions about all the places that you download fonts but I'll, I'll talk about some things. One of the things you'll notice when you go into your software and you look at your text, you'll see all the true type fonts plus those fonts that are digitized. And the last fonts you use will appear first at the top. So I've been working with a couple of different true type fonts and some I downloaded. So the, the Loki Cola you can see right here, we'll choose File New. And let's look at another font and we'll go under text, choose text. And this time we're going to choose the painter because I really like it. And what I'll do is I'll type my name and 
It's spaced quite far apart. That's because I did something to it earlier with either kerning or vertical offset. So set everything to the default and you'll get back to where you need to be. And one of the things I want to add is a flourish. Now with all of these font files, you'll notice that you have maybe some flourishes or something that's added to it that you can also add to your design. And by the way, my neighbor's mowing, so if you hear it, I apologize, but I've tried to record my video several times, and this time we're just going to continue with all the background noises. So we'll find that flourish, and here it is right here. So I'll click on it, and now you see it's underneath my name. And you'll see that on a lot of shirts that um, have been embroidered. So what we'll do is we'll make this larger so you can see it as well. Now remember when you use your true type fonts, they're going to come in typically as a satin fill. I have a programmable fill selected because I know that this is going to be too large. In fact, let's zoom in so you can see it. And you can see what that programmable fill looks like. And one of the nice things about fonts is I can select individual portions of it. So I'll select this one portion here, and what I want to do is to move it down. So let's move it down so it's underneath. And now let's go back and zoom to the selection again so you can see it. And that looks pretty good. So one of the things I recommend is that you either use a programmable fill or you use a fill stitch if you make it larger. And one of the nice things about that is that you can go and adjust the density, you can change the fill type, you can add half stitches, you can change the offset. So if you wanted to look at this and see what it looks like, let's choose uh, to reset it. This is what it will look like when it's at its default, which looks pretty good. I like Defont, so we'll go to Defont and we'll select it. And you notice there's all kinds of fonts. And let's look under fancy and let's look at something that is curly. Now, I'm telling you, you could spend a lot of time, but you want to have a font that has some substance. Um, let's try this give me sugar, some sugar. And it may be a problem because these lines are thin, but let's download it and see. And all I can tell you is when you download it, and you set it up and stitch it out on a sample. Uh, don't, don't stitch it out on your, your garment until you stitch a sample. So let's open the folder and we're going to find it. Now what I like to do is I like to cut this from here because I move it to another location and I find this is faster for me. So I'll go to my font folder and I'll paste it. Right click and I'm pasting. And now what I need to do is unzip it. So I'll unzip it here. So I'll extract the files to give me some sugar, which is that directory. Now we'll go into that folder, and here's the true type. You'll either have a TTF file or an OTF file. And what you do is you either right-click if you see the word install. That's what you choose. If you don't, then you double-click. And when you double click, I, let me do that again, double click, you'll get this menu and you choose install. This will also show you the, all the different layouts with this, with this particular font. So now it's installed and once you install it, what you need to do is you need to close down your software. So let's close the software. I close the wizard and now I'll go back to text and this time what I'll do is I'll look for that particular font. And so it was giving me some sugar. Now I could filter on some of the fonts and just select the true type. You'll notice that it has the uh, TT to the left of it. Okay, so let's try typing my name. And we'll make this larger. And we'll move it back. What I'm trying to do is to 
get the crosshairs. Sometimes you can't see them. Okay, and you can see this is a satin stitch. Let's zoom to the selection so you can see it. Now this is where I'm saying that I would measure this. Right now this looks pretty good. Measure it. Make sure it's somewhere between 5 and 7 millimeters, no larger than that. So let's go down to the widest point and we'll measure and look down here in the bottom and right now I'm in inches I want to change that to millimeters so let's measure one more time okay and that measurement is saying is where is it with 4.9 millimeters so this should be okay so I would try stitching that out that's give me some sugar it looks cute and one of the nice things about it is that you can use a programmable fill, you can use the fill stitch, and you can make several nice changes to it to adapt it to what you want. As always, thanks for your time today. If you like my videos, like and subscribe. You can find me on Facebook at Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire and PE Design 11. Thank you.